you have tuned in to the e-commerce happy hour and and i've got to get used to that intro because we're changing things up on the youtube channel just a little bit and so it's uh it's not the e-commerce aholic show it's the e-commerce happy hour and we're here to help you your career or your business grow with magento and we want to turn this more into a magento community conversation and talk about the things that you want to talk about and not necessarily just the things that i want to talk about which is you know i, I experimented with some of that stuff and and it you know wasn't necessarily the right topics for this audience so we want to keep it keep it magento keep it community oriented and hopefully we can turn this into what we're calling the magento community conversation and this week I've got a very interesting guest and and the guest is arguably on on Twitter anyway arguably the most interesting man in the Magento space Miguel Balparta from Nexus International World Traveler Miguel welcome to the live stream and tell everybody I, I guess uh, you're, you're listed in LinkedIn as a senior developer at Nexus but t tell everybody kind of what your role is there at Nexus Hey, DJ. Thanks a lot for having me. So first of all, I have to thank Caleb because he was the guy telling I was the most interesting guy on Magento. That's not true. Okay, we lost DJ now, but I'm going to continue anyway. What I do basically at Nexus is, well, it really depends on the day. Most of the times I'm working with our biggest customers, like doing super, enterprise level super. I also do a lot of traveling and different alliances. Like if you want to work with us, I'm the guy you want to talk with. So if you see me anywhere, I'll buy you a beer and we'll talk about e-commerce in general mostly. And then we can talk about hosting, but I don't know. I don't consider myself a sales guy who's always talking about my product. I like to talk about, I don't know, other stuff like open source, I don't know, performance and mostly traveling, you know? I get to travel a lot, which is really nice. I get to meet Really awesome people. This year, for example, I did India. That's a really nice country and full of Magento developers. And to be honest, I have never imagined to be there. And I had the chance because, well, I work for this company, which is crazy, and they let me travel everywhere, you know? I, it's one of those, and, and by the way, we had a, a little technical glitch there. <laughs> um, you know, we're using vMix to, to do the live stream. It popped up an error, and then I couldn't. Once it pops up an error and loses focus, my little switcher wouldn't allow me to switch to you. So I, I apologize for just ghosting on you there. Um, but, you know, DJ, my editor, he, he has classes today. He's a student here at Auburn University. And, and so I'm on my own, and we're liable to have technical glitches, but we just roll with them as they come. So we're, we're back on track here. But uh, we need to talk about the, the – you're basically one of these Magento evangelists. You know, and, and I got to figure out how to get someone to pay me to be a Magento evangelist. Like, what are the requirements if you want to go find a company to pay you to travel the world and drink beers with fine Magento folks and have a good time? Like, what are the requirements? Well, this is not something that happened from one day to another. It took me at least, I don't know, my entire career maybe. When I was younger, I used to be on Stack Exchange a lot, and then I moved to GitHub, and then I moved to, I don't know, in-person chat. But I always try to help others. And I think that's the way you, you become an evangelist, by helping others. And then there's going to be one company that's going to like you and send you to all these amazing places, but it's, it really requires a lot of work. It's not like you have to be pretty or you have to be nice with people. I'm not pretty. I'm not nice. I'm just a regular guy. I don't know, working with PHP and Magento and trying to help others. And that's at least what I think. I've seen other evangelists who really think they are like a really big deal because they know a lot of like technologies and all that kind of stuff. But for me, I don't know, I just like helping people. And that's the way I think I became the kind of developer I am these days. Don't underestimate your prettiness now, Miguel. Don't, don't <laughs> underestimate the prettiness, um, but it, it doesn't hurt if you're pretty. But it may not it may not help you as well. By the way, we are live today on multiple platforms, which we are still trying to work out. I'm actually trying to test here and see if half of them are even working. Um, but we are supposedly live on Facebook, on Twitch, 
on YouTube um, and on Periscope. So if you're watching on those other platforms, we actively stream on YouTube. Um, I'll pull your tweets. I can pull chats uh, from or posts from Facebook. Uh, but if you're on Twitch, I can't see the, the chat there. So, And if you're on Periscope, you'd be better off on YouTube because the video quality on Periscope is terrible. But we continue to add to the elaborateness of what we're doing here and, and trying to make it better for you. If you're watching and you have a topic you want us to talk about, or if you want to, even better yet, you want to contribute to these topics we're going to discuss today, then post it and, and let your voice be heard. Um, that's what we're here for, right? This is a conversation and, and we want you to be a part of the conversation. It's not just a one-sided thing where we're just dictating information to you. Um, so, you know, the, the main topic here is community engineering. And Miguel, if you would give the viewers uh, a definition and maybe an understanding of what uh, community engineering is, or at least Magento community engineering. This is a really interesting team, if you ask me. One of the things I like the most about Magento as a company is the team Max is leading. This community engineering team, as you, as you mentioned it, is a team between the developers and the company, if you ask me. These are the guys you want to talk with if you have an issue. These are the guys you want to talk with if you have a new feature. We are here to help. We are trying to have the developer's voice heard inside Magento, and that was, that was not that easy a couple of years ago. But now, things have changed completely. If you have an issue, if you have a pull request, if you have anything you want to tell us, you can find us. And that's, that's for me, the best part of this team, because People actually come to me and ask me, hey, what about this issue? What about this bug? Can we make this work differently? And I know some of the other guys who are working as maintainers now, they have the same, the same kind of relationship with the people they see, with the developers they meet. I haven't seen things like this in any other companies where core developers or people from the company are actively talking or discussing, discussing things with our developers. And I think that's really interesting. That's at least, for me, what makes Magento different than any other company or than any other open source project, you know? What do you think about all this? Because I'm part of it, but how about you? Let's say you find a bug in your development and you have to report it. Would you say you know how? Would you say you know who to reach out, DJ? Yeah, absolutely, and, and you know, it, it's, let me talk about community engineering a little bit. I, I, how long how long has the community engineering program been around? I mean, this is it's fairly new, right? It, it's not it's not something that's been around for a, a terribly long time. Do you do you know when they started this program? I'm part of this team. I have been part of this team for like two years. I started maybe last year during Imagine, and I think the team was already working a year before that, so maybe two or three years at least. Okay. The new community maintainer program. Yeah, you yeah. go. No, I was just saying that's that's a little longer than, than I uh, anticipated, honestly. It's one of those where um, – I know, and, and it may be that it's grown, and that's why I'm more aware of it at this point. But uh, I took I took at least my knowledge and and what I'm seeing from community engineering as Magento listening to feedback. And and you years ago, you used to have people complaining about you know pull requests not being accepted or it being a slow process, and you know trying to contribute was just not a pleasant experience. And the growth of this team seems to have addressed that that issue. Now, maybe it's created some some other issues by having that that many people contributing to the core. But um, it, it to me, it seemed to be a response to that feedback and, and definitely a positive thing to try to get more of the community involved with the Magento platform. Is that how you see it as well? Yeah, definitely. Let me ask you something. When was the last time you worked in a team with 800 developers? Never. Exactly. That's what we are doing now. We are working with 800 different developers contributing from like literally every time zone around the globe, and we are making that work. That's a tremendous effort. It's really, really hard because of 
well, you can imagine the language barrier, the world culture, and well, even the time zones, you know, it's really, really hard. And with this new community engineering program, I think we are actually responding to all these inquiries, all these pull requests who are coming. But then again, it's really hard because right now we have 250 pull requests open and more than 1,000 issues open. And as I told you before, we are trying to keep this, I don't know, organized to say it in a way, but sometimes you'll find we close an issue what, which was inactive for a while and you get mad. I've seen people complaining on Twitter because we close issues or we close pull requests as feature requests instead of, I don't know, bug fixing. And that's hard, you know, because you never realize we are working in an 800 development team, like an 800 developer team. It's really, really big. And it, it has some really unique issues we are facing, but we're trying to make that work. And I think it's working. Yeah, it's definitely helping. I mean, obviously, any anything has its problems, and and you know, there's always room for improvement. But I, I'm definitely proud of what community engineering has done thus far with Magento. Uh, and I just want to thank uh, those that are watching and and participating in the chat. Um, we've got uh, you know Damian Colada there, and and uh, Talesh is watching from the Centurion Lounge, trying to get to another fantastic uh, Talesh talk. I, I wished I were there. Um, to see that presentation, and sorry I'm missing it. And, and it looks like we've got the other competitor for the most interesting man in the Magento space here, and Jason Cochran watching as well. And he says that <laughs> Miguel's hair is undefeated. And so I, I tried to pull it up on the screen. Looks like we've got a glitch again this week pulling up um, actual – um, mentions in the chat. I apologize for that. But again, we just roll with it. I'll just read them out loud. Um, so, you know, if, and if you're in the chat, uh, let us know what you think about the Magento Community Engineering Program and, and you know, hey, good or bad. Like if, if it's doing the right thing, then post that. Let's talk about that. If, if you see some things that it could be doing better, post that. We'll talk about those things as well. Again, we are here to have a conversation, and it looks like Miguel has joined the chats. Um, not to yeah, I, I appreciate you joining. Um, yeah. So, and, go ahead, Miguel. No, I was, I was gonna say I really like your stickers in your laptop. You have all the best ones, but you really need the run PHP one. That's probably the best sticker, man. Well, see, and, and I just had these sent. I actually sold sponsorships on the laptop. And I think I've made a total of about $10 just to put these stickers on the back. But this is just a, the start. Most of my stickers, I was getting a hard time because I didn't have stickers on the back. But what people don't realize is that thing in the background is a refrigerator completely full of stickers. Like we've been completely uh -huh. covering the fridge. So all stickers have been going on the fridge until I got a hard time. And then I just, this looks random, but it is the start to something. I just ran out of stickers and I haven't been to a conference yet. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to load up on them. So no sticker shaming here. We got it. We got some stickers. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I have a question for you. How sure. was, did you enjoy being a host in the Netherlands? That was something, to be honest, I was really, really jealous because I dream to be a host sometimes. And when I see you and Rebecca were working on that, I was like, damn, I really want to be there too. How was it that? Was it was a lot of fun, uh, just in general. Like we'll talk about the conference in a second, but the Netherlands mm. in general was a fantastic place. And, and honestly, I, I'm a, I'm just a little poor boy from Alabama. I, you know, I, I haven't traveled an awful lot. Um, I've been, you know, all over the U.S. the last ten years, but um, haven't been out of the country. That was literally my first trip out of the United States, and uh, it was a, you know, wonderful place, a welcoming place. The you know, the culture there is fantastic. I, I really like Utrecht. Uh, you know, everybody talks about Amsterdam. Utrecht was really more my my speed, a little little less touristy, a little, I'll say a little more conservative. Um, and and so and it's just a, just a little. And it, it was a it was a good time. Now, the conference is a, a very well run conference in a, in a great location, great venue. Uh, we had a lot of excellent talks there, and it was an honor to be able to be uh, the co MC there with Rebecca Brockton. And, and I would love to be able to do it again and, I mean, to be able to do more conferences. I, I prefer doing that 
versus giving a talk. And, and it's probably just because, I mean, I, you know, just getting up there and talking crap is, is, you know, making a joke or two is, is fun and easy for me. Whereas giving a presentation, anytime you give a presentation, you kind of put yourself out there a little bit and, and you always have those doubts as to whether same thing I have with this YouTube channel. It's like, you know, it's what we're doing valuable enough and can we provide more value and sometimes you end up going too in depth or too far and just kind of keeping it high level and on the surface is is better and you know I'll, i always tend to overdo it with presentations so um it, it's, no, it's know, a, more fun for me to yes. yeah go ahead no at least that's your like that's your mother language for me, it's kind of hard because I get really nervous when I get to speak in English. I don't know why, because I have been doing this for like, I don't know, maybe 10 years, eight hours a day, but I still get nervous. And when it's in English or in any other language, I'm like, okay, I need to speak slowly so people can understand me. And I end up doing the talks like really, really fast because I'm nervous. So yeah, I, I still get nervous to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I get nervous when I speak English as well, because I'm not sure anyone's going to be able to understand me. I mean, your accent is easier to understand than mine is. So you, you definitely have nothing to worry about there, but I, I understand. I mean, it's, you know, it's just everyone has anxiety in, in some shape, form or fashion. And, and I don't, I've, I've been lucky to where I haven't done a ton of public speaking, but it doesn't bother me. I'll, I'll get just a little nervous as I'm going on stage, but I'm an, I'm typically an over preparer. So I'm prepared. And then when I go in there, I'm fine. Uh, you know, I would rather just dive into it and get the speech ready to go, and then I don't have to worry about it. And then I get just a little nervous when I walk on stage, and once I start talking, it's it's pretty much over with from there. Um, because I, I know that uh, if if something goes wrong, it's just like this live stream. If it has if it has a problem, I'm not going to be embarrassed by just you know winging it or riffing or if I you know riffing or if I got to get over there and click some buttons and it's an empty chair while you're talking. It just it doesn't embarrass me, and if you don't get embarrassed, then there's nothing to be nervous about. I don't know what you mean, but yeah, it's I don't know. Conferences are hard. Like I'm not an extrovert. I, to be honest, I enjoy going to conferences because now I know the people. But when I started, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't like being around people. I, I'm not really good at talking with others. So that's. That was something really interesting for me to learn because when I started a couple of years ago, I, don't, I didn't know anybody, like literally anybody. I might have known Kaylin because she, she, he was, she used to be working with my girlfriend, but that was pretty much it. And now that I know everybody, it's, it's really fun because I get to go there, see my old friends. There are guys I see more than my own family, you know, like this guy, GC, GC Ritzema. I see him everywhere. Like everywhere I go, there's GC and we have a lot of fun everywhere. And that's, that's at least what I think when people say community, you know, like an extended family or like an extended friendship or something like that. And conferences are places where we can meet, you know, and since we work everywhere and like in different places, I really enjoy doing that. And that's why, well, I keep traveling, you know? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I was in the same boat as of, what was it, uh, three years ago now? Um, I didn't, I had not been to a single Magento conference. I didn't know anyone in the community. Uh, I had just really started listening to um, Mage Talk, you know, a little bit after it came out. And I was looking to get involved in the Magento community, but you, you don't know how open and inviting the community is. You don't know how people are going to be. I hadn't been to really any conferences, much less a Magento conference. So what I did was, I saw that Philip Jackson and Ben Marks were both speaking in Miami at a PHP conference, Sunshine PHP. And so instead of going to a Magento conference, I decided to go to that conference to where at a, I figured at a Magento conference, those guys might be celebrities. They might be hard to get access to. They would be busy. But being leaders in this space, I thought at a PHP conference, I would have a better chance of really actually getting to know them and, and if you get to know the influential people, the people that are well-known well, then it's just easier for you to also get introduced and, and acclimated to the community. And, uh, you know, I think it was a classic overkill strategy in that this community is very welcoming and comforting regardless of the environment that you find them in. Um, but, you know, it, it is 
it is just kind of funny how many it's funny how many people out there are not actively plugged into the community and continue to just kind of bubble up to the surface occasionally um and i'm are you are you seeing that as well constantly new blood and or even people that have been around forever just kind of popping up yeah i love it and i think that's probably because how sherry road is managing everything related to the community because to be honest the internet is not a pretty place people like talk really like people say a lot of shit on the internet they insult others but in our community it has it didn't happen you know and that's probably because our leaders are really good and when i say leader i mean the people working with the community from the company in this case sherry of course and ben and i think that's really important because Let's say you want to go to a different place. Let's say you don't want to do Magento anymore and you have to go to a different community and meet everybody and try to be part of it. And it's not going to be easy. But if you come here from a different background, you're going to be welcome. And that's, at least for me, really important because at one point I was that guy and that wasn't fun. But now I know if you are an outsider, it's going to be really easy for you to integrate. We have rules like the Pac-Man rule that's being actually presented during different conferences to make new people understand what we are talking about. And all that kind of stuff is really important because it generates a better inclusion or, a, or well, I, if I can say it in a different way, it's, it's really important for the diversity. And I think that's really cool because, again, the internet is not a nice place. It's not a safe place, but you can feel safe in our conferences. And that's really important, in my opinion. Absolutely. And if you're watching and there's any particular topic or conversation you want us to touch on, then please post it in the chat. Let us know and, and we will be sure to give our thoughts or, or at least uh, seed the conversation so that you can give your thoughts on it. Um, I wanted to talk about um, there was one issue that was sent to me. And again, this is a conversation. So what anyone sends to me, I will try to get on the show. Um, and, and there was one issue where someone sent me a, it was a bug report or a bug submission um, for Magento 2 on Twitter. And it was closed. And, and this was the message. And it was, it was from the user Magento dash ENG com dash team. So it's labeled as Magento Community Engineering. And I wanted to get your insight. They wanted me to get your insight on it. Uh, and the, the message was, you know, thank you for your report. Unfortunately, we are archiving this ticket now as it did not get much attention from both Magento community and core developers for an extended period. This is done in an effort to create a quality community-driven backlog, which will allow us to allocate the required attention more easily. You may learn about this initiative following this link. Please feel free to comment or reopen the ticket if you think it should be reviewed once more. Thank you for your collaboration. So, uh, you know, the, their question was, it's a bug. Like, why are we closing? A bug is still a bug, even if no one wants to, to work on it. Um, so why, why is the Magento community engineering team grooming tickets that maybe are a little lower interest? That's a tricky question. There are a couple of things that might have happened there. That issue you mentioned is the user the QAs are using. So that might be a mistake, or that might be actually what we think. We have a lot of issues and a lot of pull requests. And if you close them, they are, you can actually search them through the GitHub search, and it's not like they disappear. So a, book, a bug report is a bug report, and it's not going to go away because we close it. But at some point, we need to have our repository organized. If you see the repository right now, you're going to be seeing 250 issues and around 1,000 open issues. Sorry. 250 pull requests and 1,000 open issues. And when you go to, a, to any repo and you see that, you might think the repo is abandoned, it's not being maintained, or something like that, you know? So there are cases we try to, like, like this one probably, there are issues we try to close to maintain the order of the repo, but it's not like we are telling people, hey, this issue doesn't exist. It's more like we don't have the resources to work on this right now. If you are able to do a pull request, do it, and if you don't, Feel free to reopen this or try to find someone who can work on this. And when I say someone who can work on this, that might be me or that might be any, anybody else from the maintainers team. So if this happened to you, you can just ping me or go into the Slack channel 
and be like, okay, we had this issue, we reported this like this, and it's closed now. What should what should we be doing? And I'm gonna try to help. But keep in mind again, we are working with 800 different developers from all around the globe. So if we are closing your issue in particular, don't take it personal. Just come to me or to anybody else, and we'll try to help. But again, we are also trying to keep the repo organized. And that includes closing invalid issues, closing issues we can't reproduce, closing pull requests who have a solution, but don't have tests, all that kind of stuff, you know? And to find the balance is kind of tricky because people get mad, we get to work a lot more than we than when what we should do. So it's it's a really it's a really hard position because we don't have a balance yet, but we'll get there eventually. Awesome. And if anyone else has any comments on that, again, please post them in the chat or whatever platform you happen to be watching this on. Um, you know, tweet at me or Facebook or if you're, you know, if you're watching on these other platforms, most of the conversation is going on on YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash e commerce While you're over there, remember to hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell while you're at it. So you'll be notified of these live streams we have just about every Friday. We will not have one next Friday. It is a major U.S. holiday weekend. I decided to take a little time off. We're working on the format of this live stream, allow us to work out some of the technical bugs that we have going on so we can continue to deliver even higher quality content. I upgraded my headphones this week. Um, my, my other ones are starting to... I, I have literally worn them out where they're like falling apart here and pieces are coming off of them um so it was it was time for an upgrade we're always buying something this is a very very expensive <laughs> hobby um it, it would be there let's just say there there are a lot of hobbies that are cheaper than live streaming for sure um i'm gonna have to start finding uh, I, I need to start finding sponsors uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that in, in just a minute. Actually, um, the, the next segment, we're at about half past the hour. This is a new segment that I want to start doing on the stream. We want to try to start doing more of these kind of segments, you know, actually talking about different things, structuring the live stream. And the next segment I have is what you bitching about on Twitter this week. And what you bitching about on Twitter this week is brought to you by Trolley, Sour Bike Crawlers, if you're if you're bitching on Twitter, has got you tasting bitter, you now have the power to make it taste sour. With Trolley Sour Bike Crawlers now available in Very Berry, we need a sponsor. See, it's not it's it's like you know, we need a sponsor. Okay, so anybody wants to sponsor that segment, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to continue coming up with just ridiculous sponsor announcements that have absolutely nothing to do with this live stream. So, um, in, in what you're bitching about on Twitter this week, I wanted to talk about Magento closing offices in the Ukraine and in Philadelphia. Um, obviously, that was big news this week that, you know, it was announced, uh, I want to say Tuesday, that they were closing the office office in the, in the Ukraine. Um, Max Pronko, the, the reigning king of Magento on, on YouTube, uh, announced that via Twitter, and... Um, then uh, the, the following day, it was announced that they are closing the office in Philadelphia. And I, I believe most, the engineering team in Philadelphia has the option to relocate to Austin or, you know, uh, what, what I'm hearing is uh, a pretty good severance package. And the other, the other people that are non-technical there have the, the option to work remotely and, and to stay where they're at. Um, the Ukraine, I know uh, a while back, I, I guess it was last year, maybe even the year before they moved, uh, or it may have been earlier this year, excuse me, they moved a lot of that team to Austin or at least gave them the option uh, to move to Austin. Um, are, are you, do you know anything about this situation, Miguel? Anything you want to add to kind of, you know, the, the news that Magento is, is closing down these two offices? I don't live in the States, so I don't know much about that. And I haven't been in Ukraine like ever. So it's not like I know these people. What I do think is this is a regular movement from a, from like any company. This is not something which should be, I don't know, alarming in my opinion, but I don't know. I'm, I'm more like a technical guy. And the things I see about this is all that, all that kind of stuff, 
I, I usually try to understand what's going on before having an opinion. And with this, the only thing I see is the company moving developers and changing branches. I have been a remote developer for years, and I know how, it's, how it looks like to be getting a contract. So I don't know. It's, it's not a nice situation, at least for the guys who are being laid off. But beyond that, I think it's, it's just normal from the industry. They are giving them the options to move to different branches. That's huge. Like, I, I don't think any other company in Ukraine is doing the same for their employees. And in Philadelphia, if they give you the chance to work remotely, well, I, I would take it. Like, if I were working there and they tell me, okay, you can work remotely instead of coming to the office all day, I'll take it anytime. But I, I don't like, to be honest, I don't like much what people is doing on Twitter, like, trying to talk shit about this, trying to set their own agenda and be like, okay, Magento is doing this, now my product is better. That doesn't make any sense, you know? I see that as a personal agenda from some of the guys I follow on Twitter and that doesn't reflect the, I don't know, Magento as a company, it reflects their own agenda. So it's, it's kind of a hard situation to comment, but it's, again, I see, I just see a company doing what any company would do. Close a branch, relocate their employees, give them a package if they want to leave. It's just regular business, if you ask me. Yeah, and uh, Talesh mentions in the chat that hasn't the Ukraine office headcount been steadily going down for years? I, I believe so, Talesh. I, I know they cut numbers significantly there. They moved some people to Austin, Texas. I, I don't know if it's been well, a steady let decline. Me, let me say something about that. Let me comment something on that. Sure. So do you know how these, these companies work? They basically open a branch of a U.S. company in a different country, and after a certain amount of time, you can actually relocate those developers to the home country of the company, which is the States in this, kind, in this case, using a different visa. Like, getting a visa to work in the U.S. is really hard, but if you work for a U.S. company abroad for, a, for an extended period of time, you can actually move between those branches with a different visa. And that's probably why the headcount has been down. It's not like it has been down, but they just moved or they just left. But these companies, they have these policies where you can work over, like overseas and then go to the States after, I don't know if it's six months or one year, but it's something like that. That that's a very interesting point. I actually, I mean, that's that's why we have guests because this is crap I, I'm not aware of. I mean, that's that's definitely good information, and and it is, you know, it's a business doing business. Un unfortunately, every it, it, it goes back to I, I feel like a lot of the angst on Twitter, and there was a lot of angst around community engineering and contributing after the Adobe acquisition, and and you know, Twitter has been. At least in my opinion, it's it seems to um, have a generally more negative tone toward Magento since the acquisition, uh, and, and a lot of that are are from people that it, it's you take ownership in it, right? Like you you take it, it is a family, it is a community, and you're involved in it, and you're you're helping the greater Magento ecosystem and, and you get these people to buy in, which is, has been one of the greatest strengths of Magento is that you've got all of these people to buy in and to help build this into what it is. And those people feel like they have some ownership, even though legally they, they don't have any ownership. And, and when things change and they don't change in their favor or they don't change in a way that they're pleased with, then they that upsets people a lot more than if it were just some random business doing it because we do all feel like we're part of what made this successful and when it you know it does something that we don't necessarily agree with we have a much stronger reaction and it, it's never good for someone to lose their job it's never good for someone to lose how they take care of their family and, and so you know i when i heard that they had two weeks to decide that's a little you know maybe i wouldn't agree with that right like i, I if that's true and again that's rumor i don't know if that's true at all but I, I heard they were given notice and they have two weeks to decide if they're moving or or if they're leaving the company with with a severance package and i, I know if someone told me right now you've got two weeks to decide if you're moving or staying 
that I, it would be the last minute before I would be able to to make that decision, and I'm not sure I could think it through well enough to make the best decision for my family. And, and so things like that, you know, the details of it, I, I don't really know what the severance package is. I, I've heard rumors that it, it is extremely generous, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, so, you know, the details will make a difference, uh, but – you know, the reaction to change is, is a lot stronger in this community than it is anywhere else I've seen. And it is because of the strength of this community and how everyone feels like they feel like they built Magento into what it was. And then someone else got all the money for that. And, and a lot of people, they, you know, in the, in maybe, maybe openly, maybe in the back of their mind, they think maybe, you know, maybe they were maybe they were misguided, or maybe they were taken advantage of, or maybe uh, you know what whatever. I, I don't know exactly the psychology of that. I, I'm not Dr. Phil, but um, it, it definitely reactions to things are definitely stronger in this community. Um, I, anything you want to add to that topic? Anyone in the chat want to yeah. want to add anything to that topic? There's something. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this story. I used to love Facebook. Like they used to have an API which was really good. Like they used to share everything. Not like now. That was maybe like I don't know five, six, seven years ago. And I used to like working with them, like doing API integration and all that kind of stuff. But then one day they removed the access to those APIs, and I had a product. My product was based on their API. Was that my fault? Was that Facebook fault? I don't think that was my fault. I think that was Facebook's fault. But then after a couple of years, I realized that was my problem because I built a program, a tool, a system on top of theirs, and then they removed the access to the API. And that's the same thing I'm seeing right now. People build their business around Magento, and now they took a different path, or maybe not the path they used to have. Now they are complaining, and I don't like that. I know we all build Magento the way it is now, but I think that you need to understand that building a business of a different business is going to cost you money at the end of the at the end of the way. Or I don't know. It's I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it's kind of tricky. You know, you don't build a business on top of other and then you complain because they change. It's that's the way I think about all this. And then I see people who were actually contributing that are not contributing anymore because now they are partners doing the same thing they were doing. Like, let's say shipping, let's say, I don't know, payment, something like that. And then right now we have different partners than the ones we used to have. And now they don't want to contribute because they are contributing to the competition. And that's a really, really, really hard thing to take out of their minds. What do you think about that? Would you say, let's say you are, I don't know, a payment provider and you don't want to contribute to the core because PayPal is there. Would that make any sense to you as a company to contribute or not? What do you think? Well, you know, the, it, we have the we have the same problem in, in the SI space, right? It, you, there, there are a lot of people you run into that are contributing that, may, you know, maybe you're getting benefit from it. And maybe it's a little different if you're a technology provider in that, you know, that that company is baked into the core and now they have an advantage over you in sales. Um, whereas, you know, no, no SI is going to be baked into the core. You may be baked into the Magento sales team, but you know, that's a whole different story for a, for a different day. Um, I, I always look at it as change favors the hungry. And if you're winning the game and you're getting fat and lazy and you really are comfortable with the status quo change resets the game back down to a more normalized level to where those that are hungry have the opportunity to take advantage of that change and get ahead in the game and, and i've always been an underdog in everything i do i'm always you know i built this company in a town with zero enterprise grade e-commerce going on anywhere we're in a state with very little so we, we are geographically limited, and I'm a poor country boy from a town of 200. We, we don't even have – you can't get cable TV in my hometown right now, much less internet. 
And so, you know, I, I've always been an underdog. I've always <laughs> been resource strapped, cash strapped, uh, geographically limited. Like I, I've, and, and, and a lot of it may be self-inflicted by not moving to a better geography. But, you know, those are limitations we have turned into advantages. And so anytime the, the game resets and the game changes, if you are hungry enough, that gives you an opportunity. That is an opening for you to be the first person to exploit the differences to then win the game. And if I were a technology partner, I would be – and I felt like it was a big enough advantage – to be in the core, that I would be doing what it takes to be in the core. Um, How you, you know, see, unless, like, go, you know, the guys from specialists from Italy, those guys, they, they were in partners like maybe two years ago. And today, or like a couple of weeks ago, they were included in the core because of their security extensions. There are cases where partners were leaving Magento, but there are cases where partners are joining us. And Mesh Specialist is a really nice case because they have a two factor authentication extension right now in the core. And that's, that's something really important, you know, because they developed that and they had that included in the core without doing much lobby or anything. And they were included because we need an extension. So what happened was we needed an extension. A partner had it and they were okay with Magento including that in the core. And that worked out really, really well. And that's at least one of the cases I like to highlight when I can, when I have the opportunity, because these guys... They were probably unknown a couple of years ago. And now I love Ricardo. I get to see him everywhere we go. He's one of the frequent speakers we have about security with Talesh. It's really, really good. And they are killing it. And they, they were in existence a couple of years ago, at least in our radar, you know, from community, from like partners and all that kind of stuff. But now again, they are, they are huge and they are doing probably really good business because of that. Exactly. Uh, you know, it, everyone has an opportunity and those who are successful read the landscape and take advantage of it. And, and if being in the core is an advantage, then, then you, you should be looking be. To, to do that. And if there's disadvantages to mm -hmm. it, I am all for someone that knows the disadvantages of being in the core to come on and let's have that conversation. Like I, I would love to have that conversation to discuss uh, you know, why, what, what's the negative? Cause I honestly, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I know the entire circumstances of the, the financial commitment. Cause I obviously it, it is pay to get in the core uh, if you're a technology partner. So I, I don't understand what those um, financial implications are and, and, you know, I'm, but I'm all ears. Um, David Manners has joined the chat. David, thank you for joining. We appreciate you being here. We've had uh, a fantastic conversation and um, I think it's, you know, we, we've, we've just finished the what you're bitching about on Twitter segment, which is brand new, but you can catch it in replay. I mean, you, you can go back, but don't go back now and start, start here. And then you go back later so that you can be a part of the rest of this conversation. Uh, and again, if there's anything anyone wants to add to that, please Post it in the chat. Uh, don't forget while you're here to hit that subscribe button. Um, I, I think that's you know that that's about all I really have to add to the closing offices um, situation. If if anyone in chat has anything, we can bring it back up. If there are any other topics you want us to talk about, let us know. Um, so and I Jay, I don't know if Jason Cochran is still here. He hasn't. He hasn't posted in the chat for a little while, Jason. Let, let me know if you're still here. But Kalen Jordan had um, an, an interesting conversation going on Twitter where, where he said that it's a, it's a neck and neck competition between Miguel here and Jason as to who the most interesting man in the Magento community is. And I'm, I'm gonna read I'm gonna read the resume here as, as posted by Kalen. Um, and sorry, 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 Kalen, for stealing your content, man. I, it was really good. It's a really good conversation. I'm just going to go ahead and apologize if you were going to live stream about it. Um, but I, Kalen doesn't watch these anymore. So unless somebody tags him, he's not even going to know. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel bad. I don't, I don't know where, where Kalen's been. He's probably busy with that, uh, tank top barbecue and having a good time living the good life that I am so jealous of at this point. 
um, while I'm, you know, slaving away. At, I, I'm, yeah, I'm slaving away while I'm slaving away at work here, right? Um, so, right. Miguel, your your resume was sexy Argentinian, which we've already talked about your prettiness. Um, digital nomad, I mean, all over the world. You you pretty much are you live all over the world, and uh, you speak all over the world. Uh, your barbecue game is on point, and you speak multiple languages. And so we've got Jason Cochran, which is ex-military, really into goats. He has a farm with quite a few goats. He is in a band and practices Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I, I, I mean, this is an interesting, this is an interesting <laughs> competition. So I'm going to give you the platform here to state your case as to why you are the most interesting man in the Magento community. No, I'm not the most interesting guy in the Magento community. That's going to be, I don't know, maybe Ben, because all the travels and every, like, all the people he knows. But no, I can't compete with the cute goats. That's, like, impossible. If I get a picture with, of a goat with a pyjama or something like that, that's impossible to compete against. So I think I'm going to leave Jason on the title. I'm okay with a VP of the most interesting person in the Magento community or something like that. And I will leave, will leave Jason with it. He'll be happy. And he's really, really, really good with memes on Twitter. So that's another skill we should point. His, his meme game is on point all the time. <laughs> okay. Jason wins. Looks like he wasn't yeah, here we, to claim we, his Jason, prize. Jason. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations, Jason. This drink is for you. Uh, Talesh mentions here in the chat. Um, listen, make sure I'm unmuted there. Talesh mentions here in the chat, uh, while Made Specialist is new to contributing to the core, and Made Specialist is your company name, correct there, Talesh? Correct me if I'm wrong. I, th I think so. Uh, no, no, that's, that's the company's name, not Talesh. Talesh is Beat 79, something like that. I don't know. Okay. Really. I, I thought he was, I don't know. Anyway. I'm sorry. No, I, I messed no, it up. Specialist is from Rick Tempesta from Italy. Okay. Made Specialist is new to contributing to the court. That that's the company. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm 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 off. I'm off. Um let's see. I'm getting back to the comment here. New to contributing to the core. Creativity is an old hand at this thing who has also contributed to the core. And creativity is an interesting story. I, I love the Warrens. I love what they're doing over there. That is definitely um, a, a company I think we can all um, as, aspire to emulate in some shape, form, or fashion as far as a company that seems to have been built hand-in-hand -hand with Magento. Um, and, you know, their, their one check, one uh, one step checkout was a stroke of genius, maybe not the most technically complex module that's ever been built, but it was a stroke of marketing genius. I still am very, very bitter and jealous that I did not think of that and contribute it ahead of time. Um, but, okay, Ricardo is the CTO of Made Specialist from Italy. Thanks for correcting mm -hmm. me there, Talesh. I can't keep up, especially the overseas companies. I don't run into them a whole lot. I don't know a lot about them. Um, but, uh, you know, Creativity, he was just kind of mentioning Creativity as an example of a company that has been contributing to the Magento core for a long time. Are, are there any other companies you can think of, Miguel, that, that are kind of like Creativity that have been contributing for a long time? Well, there's always Nexus, who's been trying to do this forever. I've seen a, a couple of other hosting company, hosting companies trying to work on the Chrome issues. But yeah, I think most of the companies we see every day on Twitter, at some point, one way or another, they are working on the core. Like these guys from Adweeks, Jaroslav is one of the maintainers too. He's a really nice guy. All these guys, all these companies, they are trying to make this product better. And for example, Creativity, they did a really, really nice plugin for the one-click checkout. Remember, remember that? This year, I think the patent was was, I don't know, was off or something. And then we are we were able to use that feature. I think that's going to be included in 2.3, the one-click button. And that's a really nice feature, just like the two-factor authentication. Those are the features we want to see in the platform. And these companies, being a partner or not, they actually developed it, developed it. And then they were able to include it in the core, making the product better. And that's why I like this approach, these partners trying to submit code to the core, because 
We are trying to make this product better, and the more options we have, the better. Open source is not easy. And sometimes there are people who can't work on something or an issue that's going to be open forever. And sometimes you have people working on the same issue, like two or three different groups of developers working on the same, doing different solutions. And that's the way you make the platform better, by having different solutions to the same problem and being able to pick the best. Absolutely. We have a great question in the chat here from David Manners. Uh, David says, since you are at many events, what's your favorite event and what do you think makes a good event? That's a tough one. I like the Netherlands. I like the event they put last year. I wasn't there this year. And I like that place because I would live there. So that's that might be ideas on my side. But yeah, probably Mid Magento Netherlands or Mid Magento Germany. Those are the events I like the most because those are the oldest and the best ones, at least in my opinion. They are organized in a really different way. Well, with experience, if you ask me. They have they already have the experience. And this year, for example, Mid Magento Germany was probably the best organized conference I have ever been. And it was Germany, you know. They they are really organized, like it's a really nice city. But then it takes a lot of effort to put a conference together. And I don't know, it's it's always hard. And when you see a conference which is really, really well organized, you have to tell the organizer because they spend a lot of time and they are always really happy to hear they are doing a good job. So yeah, it's going to be Mid Magento Germany or Netherlands. And I don't know what makes an event a good event. Probably a lot of attendance. Probably, I don't know, good talks. Having good talks or good speakers is hard because we live everywhere. It's not like you can pick the best speaker you have and have them in your conference, I don't know, on the other side of the world. But yeah, I would say if you have a couple of good talks, a good venue and some food, you should be set. And of course, the Wi-Fi needs to be working all the time. That's really <laughs> important for conference. Yeah. Good. All it takes really is good, good Wi-Fi. Forget everything else. Good Wi-Fi and good food. You're, you're good to go then, right? No, I know. I know people is gonna hate me because of that because they put a lot of effort on that, and I know it because I get to go everywhere. But yeah, it's organizing conference is really hard. So if you can support your local conference, just do it. If you can buy a ticket or invite a friend, do it too because most of the conferences are are maintained by the sponsors, and well, tickets are not a really big way of I don't know making a conference profitable to say it in a way so it's either sponsors or yeah pro most of the time sorry, it's sponsors maintaining conferences so yeah be thankful and buy a ticket if you want to continue seeing these events another great question here from Talesh uh, would you think the intensity of the hallway track discussions be a mark of a great event so how how important is the hallway track in regards to being a good event I like the hallway. It's a really interesting way to meet new people, but sometimes it's hard because people is afraid. People might think, I don't know, I'm going to be busy or something like that, and people don't come over. But we are trying to make that change with the Pac-Man rule and everything. I repeat that because I consider that as a really important thing to do in conferences. Basically, the Pac-Man rule is people leaving a space when talking in front of each other so anybody else can join and that way you will feel welcome but yeah again talking in the hallway is not always easy but if you see me or anybody else feel free to come and tell me something you like or some, tell me something you don't like about magenta and we'll talk about that and then we'll have a beer but don't be shy there's no need to be shy we are really amicable people and we always try to know more people when we go to these conferences because again i really like that part like meeting new guys hearing what they are doing with magento talking with them about the companies they work for like a couple of weeks ago maybe i was in london and we had this hackathon and i met a guy from italy and we talk about the salaries we talk about the companies who were hiring and he didn't knew and he didn't know most of it and he was like, okay, now I know all of this and now I can go get a new job, you know? And that guy today is probably earning more, more like living with his family happier and all that kind of stuff. And most of that was because we met and we get to talk about all the things he didn't know. He was really happy and I was really happy too, you know? 
Absolutely. And there was uh, some discussion on Twitter this week, and I have a live stream scheduled in two weeks to, to talk in more depth about it. But I, I wanted to get your opinion on the value of having merchants at a conference, um, the, the value of having merchants speak at a conference, uh, you know, th there's and, and how do we how do we get merchants to be more involved in 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 the greater Magento community? That that's a tricky question. I'm not a merchant. I have never been a merchant, and I have been always a developer, to say it in a way. So I'm not really sure what to do to attract more merchants. But what I do know is that we need more of them in our conferences because right now we have a really good ecosystem, but we don't get to go to the merchants. We don't get to show them what we can do. And that means they don't know what the platform is capable, capable of. So we are trying to have more merchants in these events so they can see the platform. But I don't know, it's, it's really, really tricky. And this was one of the conclusions we had during the Magento Association meeting. We need more merchants, and merchants are really scarce in our meetings. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Venice, in Italy, and I was talking with these guys from the organization, and they were like, okay, we tried to bring more merchants, but that wasn't that easy. So maybe next year we're, we, were, we are going to be doing free tickets for them. So I don't know, there seems to be this necessity to have more merchants, but at least from my side, I don't know what to do. You know, my talks are mostly for developers. The way I speak is understood by developers mostly. So if you put me with a merchant in the same room, I wouldn't know what to do. So I'm not the right guy to answer that. Yeah, and it's you know it's it's a tough it's a tough question, and it depends on what the goal of the conference is. If it's uh you know Mage Titans used to be only developer focused, and if it's only developer focused, well then you only need developers there. And, and uh, it's easy to get developers to, well, I say easy, it's easier to get developers to a conference. And oftentimes if you get merchants, it's technically developers from the merchant that, that are at these conferences. Cool. Now, if you try to have a merchant focused event, it's a lot like, it's a lot like a nightclub, right? If you get the females to come to the nightclub, then the males will come to that nightclub. And so, you know, getting people to sponsor that want to sell to merchants is tough if you don't have a good merchant base. But on the flip side of that, do merchants want to come somewhere to be sold something? Probably not. So if the talks, if the talks are selling them stuff, then is that something they're, they're interested in? If it's educating them or helping them in some way, uh, then – you know, maybe maybe that's more inviting. I, again, I'm not a merchant either, and and we, you know, I've got um, some a developer of a merchant coming on, uh, and I've got uh, David Detner who used to work um, for a merchant coming on, and and um, we're going to have uh, you know an interesting conversation there, and and hopefully they can provide uh, different different insights, but um, you know they don't they don't want to come to a conference to be sold to. And so what value do you provide to them to draw them to your conference? Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question. Although, even if you're selling to merchants, I would argue that you're much better off selling to developers that understand your technology and the usefulness, and those developers will then sell to the merchants. Um, you know, you're better off yeah, selling to an agency. Yeah, but, there are some times where the developer is not the one making that decision. And that's really tricky because I know my talks are for, the, let's say I'm trying to sell them hosting. And then I'm be, I'll be like, okay, this hosting is good because of this and because of that, but then that's gonna be for a developer. And that developer in particular is not the one who's gonna be making the decision on which hosting to use. So that's, I think that's one of the things why we need to have more merchants because they are the ones making the decisions. But when you think about that as a, from a developer perspective, it's kind of hard because you are, well, at least in my case, I'm not the one making the decisions on which software to use most of the times, you know? So if we are trying to sell that to a developer, but then that guy is not the one doing the, making the decision, it's, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. 
Yeah, the, the question is, though, you as a developer, say, say you're going to a conference, but you're not speaking at that conference. What is the true value of that conference to you? For me, it's not the talks. I, I didn't go to a I, – maybe I went to one, the PWA talk, and imagine this year, last year, I went to zero talks at Imagine. I am not there for the talks. Most of the stuff that's going on in the talks – I've already seen somewhere else, maybe presented a little differently. But if I want to know about that, I'll talk to that person directly. Uh, I, I'm much more interested in the networking uh, aspect of the conference. A lot of people that I like to know and want to associate with in one place. And, and as a developer, I feel like that is uh, one of the really big benefits of a Magento-focused conference. You go, you go socialize with other developers, and, and I learn more from those people. I learn more from being at Parasol up till 4 o'clock in the morning. Like, I, I, was, I was there with RoboFirm uh, till 4 o'clock in the morning one night at a, and asking them business questions and getting advice from them and, and just having open conversations about business and Magento and, and I learn more from that than I will from any talk. Because talks, they only have so much time. They can't go too in-depth. And I don't learn that way anyway. I learn by getting my hands dirty and jumping into something and screwing something up and figuring out how to fix it. Um, so for a merchant, what's that value, right? Like if a talk, if we just assume a talk can only scratch the surface, and so that's not enough value necessarily to – it's valuable, but it's not enough value to get them to spend the type of money it takes to come to a conference. And we – you know, is the networking – is there something else that can be put in there to push them over the edge of that value curve? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. One thing I've seen in different conferences are free tickets for merchants. For example, for Magento Leave Europe – you can actually contact Magento and ask for a merchant ticket. And I think that's a good way to try to have them in our conferences without spending a lot of money. That ticket is like a thousand bucks. So it's, I don't know, between the money and you being a merchant who's going to be assaulted by all the developers trying to sell you something, at least not having to pay the ticket is something good, you know. But it's, yeah. I don't know. I, when you say you don't see value in the talks, for example, for me, it's different because I'm also part of the research and development team at Nexus. And the things I see there, those are the things we are working today. For example, let's say PWA. We are working on that. And everywhere I go, I get to see these guys from Devanti, from the PWA studio, and all that kind of stuff, even from Deity. And I get to know them, I get to see their talks, and then I get to speak with them about the technologies they use. And these are the things I take to the company. Because again, the conferences are a part for me, but also a part for the company. And everywhere, everything I learned there, I try to apply that to our processes or even to our hosting standards, you know. At some point, PWA is going to boom. And supporting that is really, really hard. It's not like supporting PHP and Magento. And if I weren't doing these talks or all these conferences, I wouldn't know where to start. But now I know some of these guys are using Passenger. Some of these guys are actually using like dev servers for all kind of stuff. It's JavaScript is wild, like really wild. But besides that, I get to learn a lot from these talks. And I think they have some value, at least for people like me, who don't know a lot about things like front end or I don't know, architectural decisions. And those kind of presentations are the ones I enjoy the most because I get to learn something and they take and then take that back to the company and work on that. And that's, that's really nice. At least for me, I really like doing research and development sometimes. Yeah, and I, I'm not, if, if it, you know, I didn't necessarily mean there are, there is no value in those talks, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm I'm not a developer anymore. Uh, you know, I'm a certified Magento, certified plus Magento one developer, but I, I haven't written a useful line of code in a couple of years at this point. And so my interests are more business oriented. And, and so, you know, if, if I were a tech lead or a developer, and the t the talks would would be more of interest to me, but um, for a merchant, you know, I'm just trying to figure out more than the talks. If the talks are not selling, it's been a, a great conversation in the YouTube chat uh, around not hard selling merchants. They they don't want to be hard sold. So if we if the the talks are not that, if they're just valuable information 
then outside of that, what else can we provide? Because I, I really, I firmly believe that just the talks are not worth to most people the expenses of going to a conference unless that conference is almost free to you or right in, you know, if it's right in your backyard and you can just drive from your house and the tickets are, you know, affordable and, and that, that, okay, maybe. But if I've got to travel to Austin, Texas or New York to go to this conference, um, it, it's not, I, I just think the talks alone are not incentive enough to get someone to, to that conference. Uh, and, and so, yeah, you we- know, the conversation is what else might tip that scale because I, I think it can be subtle. It doesn't have to be some grand revelation. Um, you know, if you can, if you can let them know that there is something there that is going to help their business, you know, may, maybe that pushes them in the right direction. I'm going to check the chat here, uh, see if there's anything that you guys want to want to talk about um Talesh says he's going to be at imagine maybe at imagine next year as a merchant um i believe they're green I badges right the merchants are green badges um i you know I, I i i'm guilty of it i'll sit down at the breakfast table and i'll just kind of scan around and say uh yeah that table's got like six green badges i'm not gonna sit down and sell them but i'm gonna at least sit where there are merchants to have conversations because who knows right you, you just don't know um, yeah, and to be honest, we all go to these conferences at least as companies to try to sell. So it's not like we are lying when we tell merchants, hey, come to our conferences so we can sell you stuff. It's, that's the reality. If you are paying for a, conferences, for a conference as a company and you have a booth or you are sponsoring, you think you are going to be doing more sales. And that's, that has to be said because we are doing sales. When I'm at a conference, I'm working, I'm trying to bring more sales to the companies, and I'm also having fun. But from a work perspective, we are all selling one thing or another. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I definitely need to sell some websites to stay in business. Somebody, oh. unless unless I can get enough sponsors to just sponsor this show, someone has to pay the light bill for that sign to stay on back there, right? So, you know, if I don't sell websites, it's all a problem. Um, I, I don't do this show necessarily to sell websites, uh, but, you know, being more well-known or being a contributor to a platform and helping the platform grow that we can all grow with, well, that, that is a, a benefit of this. And, and if there are no benefits, I don't care who you are, no one here is a saint. Um, if there are no benefits to doing things, to investing money, then we will cease to do those things. Um, and that's David, the, that's David the yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just, just business one oh one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, David manners in the chat here says, uh, for, for me, a good talk entertains me and expires, inspires me to research a topic. When I get home, I try to write my talks that way. Also conferences are also good at making connections outside of Twitter. And, and I definitely, again, I just want to reiterate, if I if I said it, I misspoke. I'm not saying that they the talks have no value whatsoever. I, I think if you, if, if that is the type of content that you are dealing with every day, if those are the problems you are dealing with every day, like what's coming in PWA, what technology stack is everyone using, you know, how is Vue different uh, than React in, in um, you know, the PWA landscape, then those types of talks are going to interest you. Just like the only talk I attended was the Progressive Web App Talk because, you know, I'm interested in business-related content. I think that that is going to be a big thing business-wise over the coming years. So uh, there, there's definitely lots of usefulness in those talks. I'm just not sure how much value merchants get from us giving um, – you know, Magento related talks. I, I don't, I don't know. And, and again, in two weeks, we're going to have uh, Brent Peterson, uh, David Deppner and Adam Rondazzo on to have that conversation in 
more depth. And we've been going for about an hour and 10 minutes. There is one thing I wanted to make sure we cover before we get off of here. If there's anything else we haven't covered that you want to talk about and you're watching it live, post it in the chat and, and we'll be sure to get to that as well. I always ask guests to, to you know, we're going to go at least an hour. And if the conversation keeps keeps interesting on uh, on YouTube, and we keep getting questions and a great discussion, then we may go up to two hours. Um, but the, the thing, the last thing I have in my notes here that I wanted to make sure we talk about are contribution days. And, and I think we, you know, we were headed down that path earlier and then we got sidetracked with great conversation. Um, so tell everyone, just, just to define it, for those that maybe haven't participated in contribution days, um, uh, what is a Magento contribution day? So a contribution day is a day usually before or after any event, or maybe not really related, where you can actually go and code with the Magento core engineers. Let's say that's Eugene, let's say that's David or Max, or any of those guys, and they are going to be sitting with you trying to make you understand how to code for Magento 2 and how to contribute back. But that's not the only part, because for me, at least, it's really important to get to see these guys, because I don't know much, well, I don't know everything about Magento 2. And when I have a question, I want them to answer. I don't want the random guy from Twitter telling me I need to do something on the code. I want these guys to tell me, hey, here's your issue. Here's where you are doing things wrong, or you can do this differently. Because those are the guys who actually created this platform. Those are the core engineers. And with these contribution days, you can actually go to these places, meet them and work with them for an entire day, and if you have any questions, they'll be there for you. And that's really important because, again, these are the guys who build this platform. Yeah, and have you seen, is there is there like a difference in attendance? Um, I, I know, you know, conference-wise, there are a ton of conferences in Europe. Uh, they, they're, they're one mm -hmm. in every country, it seems like, it, it just about every country, if not. Um, whereas in the U.S., they're – you know, we obviously much bigger geographic space, but much fewer Magento conferences. Are are you seeing a difference as well in the attendance and participation in these contribution days across different countries? Is there anyone that maybe stands out as a a you know high performer or a country that stands out as a low performer? No. Most of the events are well I do mostly Europe and the US when I do events. So that's what I'll be talking about. What the things I see during these contribution days is always the same. People love it. They just love it because they have the chance to meet these guys. This year, for example, we did a contribution day in India with Brett, with Brent and the rest of the Wagento team. That was incredible. Like you can imagine India is just different because of the amount of developers they have. But that was incredible because those guys, they were really happy to be working with these architects. And they were really happy because that it didn't end there. They, they keep working on that and they keep calling us and asking us to review their pull request. And that means they actually understood how, it, how do you work with a team this big or how do you contribute? And that's the, the things we are trying to teach others, how to contribute and how to do it by yourself. Because you can do it with me, sitting with me anywhere you go, but I want you to do that when you go back to your home, you know? I want you to do that because you like it, not just because I'm sitting with you, explaining you how to do it. And I think that's something we actually were able to do in all of these countries. Everywhere we go, we have the same response. People is really happy with it. And I'd say India was probably the biggest one. But again, it doesn't matter if we have 10 guys or like, 25 developers, it's going to be the same because at least we'll be happy to know at least one developer learn how to contribute back and how to contribute to open source, which is not something everybody knows or something everybody does right, you know? Any ideas for how we might incentivize or uh, even if it's not incentivizing, how do we increase participation in these contribution days? Probably by not charging a ticket. This is something I've been trying to discuss with different organizers. Sometimes these contribution days have fees like a different entrance or they are included in the Mid Magento event ticket. 
I don't like that in particular. I don't like that personally because I don't, I don't think it makes sense to pay, to contribute, if you know what I mean. Like you're basically paying to be able to sit with these guys and contribute back. I don't like that approach, but I do understand sometimes it helps covering the conference calls. So one thing we can do is try to sponsor people to, con to, to go to these events or try to cut the ticket at all with a different sponsor or something like that. It's, that might be one way to do it, but besides that, I don't know, man. I think that's working really, really good, and it's happening everywhere. And it's not necessarily tied to a Mid Magento event, but for example, in Munich this year, it's going to be a contribution day in the fest, and there's no Mid Magento Germany in there or Mid Magento Munich. That's just an event done by a company who's trying to contribute, and that's really important because I think that's going to be free and people are is going to be able to go there without paying. And I don't know. I just like that part, but I don't like paying to contribute. Yeah. And so if you want to participate in one of these contribution days, do you need to be physically in attendance or can you participate virtually? I think it depends. Most of the contribution days we have around events are like, with a human presence, to say it in a way. But this year, we did a distributed contribution day. I was part of it in Buenos Aires with the Magento User Group Argentina. And that was nice, too, because we were working with a different maintainer in different countries. Like, I was in Argentina, David was in Kiev, if I recall correctly. And a couple of guys were in in a different part of Ukraine with Adwix. That was really nice. So there's no need to be physically available to come to these places. You just need to find, I don't know, a day you want to contribute or, I don't know, there's no need to wait for a particular day. You can ping me on Twitter tomorrow, Saturday, and I'm going to try to help you anyway. Or you can join our Slack channel, which is, I don't know, magentoencom.slack.com, and we'll try to help you to contribute there. There's no need to be physically available or in a place in, in a given time. You can do it online everywhere. You can have your own personal Magento contribution <laughs> day. Um, we had a question from Talesh in the chat, and uh, Talesh's question was, contribution days versus hackathons. What's your thoughts on the pros, cons of each? Hackathons are nice because you get to spend like 24 hours inside the office coding nonstop, and contribution days are not like that. This, the contribution days I've been, uh, I've been seeing lately are more like a regular day where you go to an office and you call for a couple of hours, maybe eight. But I don't know, it's, I have never been to a Magento Hackathon, maybe once in Vegas, but I usually do contribution days and I like them. But again, I don't know how to compare that with a Hackathon because I have never been in one. All right. Well, I think that's yeah. all we had to go over here. I'm checking the chat just to make sure there wasn't anything that we we missed. I appreciate everyone participating in the chat. Um, you know, we 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 just do these. We want these to be an open conversation, and it's hard to do that when we don't have active participation in the chat. So it's always great when folks can show up and talk about these topics. I understand people are busy, and this is a tough time, uh, especially if you are overseas, if you're in Europe or other parts of the world, that this is you know late on a Friday night. I, I get that. It's fine. We may experiment with some different time zones at some point in the future. Again, we have a live stream in two weeks where we're going to be talking about how we can get – merchants more involved in the Magento community. I had these uh, t-shirts. I just had like a couple of these test shirts printed up here as well. Um, I'm going to try to get some of these printed. I'm going to start giving them the way on the live stream, but we're probably going to be several weeks away from that before we actually do that. Um, but if you're interested in a t-shirt, let me know again. Like I said, we'll probably start just picking one random person out of the chat each week and just sending them a t-shirt. Uh, Miguel, any parting shots there? No, I'm done. Do you remember that shirt you gave me a couple of years ago? I still have it. It's a blue shirt with jammers and pretty. It's really, really pretty and really, really big. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, a... I'm going to wear it. <laughs> there you go. 
that that would have been funny had your work. We've got a box full of them in the closet in there, but you know, we it, it's got a logo on the back of it of a company that we no longer partner with. And so we don't really want to give them out to people. Um, I'm going to have some more. I've got this one. I'm going to print this one. I'm going to print the e-commerce happy hour logo. You can see down there on a shirt and then probably the Jamerson logo as well. And we'll just randomly give away shirt. We may even do a three pack and give away three shirts to people for participating in the chat. Again, I appreciate everyone watching. We will not have a live stream next week. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. And thanks for being a part of the e-commerce happy hour.